Hello, everybody. How are we doing today? Good, good. Huh? That's good. That's good. Um, I wanted to do a video, like, not really a response video, but um, there is a woman named Emily Butler um, who does a lot of poetry videos. And um, out of the, I would say the the few people on like BookTube or YouTube that talk about poetry or poetry tube, um, I have less bad things to say about Emily Butler's takes than um, almost anyone who does poetry shit on YouTube. But, um, she did a video <clears throat> yesterday called, um, titling a poem or how to title a poem or, um, I should take notes, like, instead of just running off the, the old gob here. Um, but yeah, so she had a lot of interesting stuff to say. Um, I'll try to remember to link the video, but the thing that, um, she talked about that I thought was really fucking cool was she didn't just talk about poem titles. She talked about, um, collection titles and I am very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm a stickler when it comes to titles. Like I think titles are, the most important thing almost because especially for a collection, because that title not only is <clears throat> kind of showing people what to expect, um, or what not to expect from a collection, but writers, us writers, um, typically we are shit marketers. We, do not like to market our shit. We do not try, or we try, but we do it very poorly to get the word out about our stuff. And typically, the title of said collection is really going to be the um, the billboard that people see when they drive by the highway. The title of that book. Um, so that is really important and I feel like I have nailed it in some senses with some of my stuff and I have completely screwed the pooch on um other titles that um I have done so uh yeah let's go over my stuff let, let, let's real quick speaking of great titles boom fingering the mundane um, this is a collection of all of my early, um, chapbooks and, um, I called it fingering the mundane. Um, I wanted to call it fucking the mundane, but I thought that would get it flagged. Um, so I called it fingering the mundane and I was talking more about that, but apparently, um, the internet thinks of it more like that. So, um, like, I, I fucked myself there too. But I think it's a good title, because it's taking um, <clears throat> all of the day-to-day -day horrors of life, the day-to-day -day horrors of adulting, and um, just saying, no, fuck you, fuck you, I'm not doing this anymore. And it's, uh, I should have called it fisting the mundane because of how angry I am about it. <clears throat> but um, it's just like a lot of people, when they read poets, like they expect or they want the poet to have led a amazing life that they have a well of experience to draw from to be able to tell what they need to tell. 
And um, from what I've noticed, especially from the Instagram world of things, is that most people haven't fucking lived a day of their lives. So um, looking for insight um, of the world through a lot of modern poetry is kind of like um, being in a dark room that's the size of a shoebox and trying to stick your finger into a light socket. Um, like, you'll eventually do it, and when you do, you'll probably get a shock, but the shock will be so bland that um, you you ask yourself, why, why was this a good idea in the first place? And a lot of you are going, that's a shitty analogy, but when you think about it, think of the electrical that would have to be wired into a shoebox to make that a room big enough for you. And then that's the real question. That's what we got to think about. You see what I'm saying here? Um, <clears throat> so with all that said, and me trying to very poorly market my shit, Fingering the Mundane, we're at 307, and we've been at 307 all week, folks. So if you were sitting there going, oh yeah, I'm going to contribute to this, but I was just going to wait a little bit. Now's the time to do it. <clears throat> now's the time to do it. And I would say, too, I think now's the time to hit the bigger tiers. I'm just going to say it out loud for all of us to hear. Because I know you, you want me to come to your town, get shit-faced out of all hell, teach a poetry class, and then do a reading. And then get shit-faced again. We, we can do that, folks. I just need your help. Let's get shit-faced together. Okay, moving right along. So, um, <clears throat> my horrible titles. Um, I think I've gone over a lot of this before, but, like, um, Acid. Not the greatest title, but maybe someone would go, oh, maybe this has to do with something like taking acid. It does. So that was a good guess. Good job, guys. Um... The longest poem in there is the um, uh, reenactment, let's say, of a bad trip. Um, ingrown air. I just drew that picture with um, some shitty spray paint thing on Photoshop. And I'm like, oh, that should be a cover. Oh, ingrown air. That's clever. This is a horrible fucking title, guys. Um, <clears throat> if you want to read into it and go, oh, it's like the air you breathe is ingrown like a hair that's ingrown and festers and gets pussy, um, to the point where, yeah, I mean, you could fucking do that if you want. I just, I thought it was clever, um, and it wasn't. Um, so don't do that. Um, DNF'd. This is clever because it is four poems that I felt like I didn't finish. Um, so doing a bunch of poems that I felt like weren't finished and then putting them in a collection of unfinished poems, I think that's clever. That that works for me. Um, the Exhausted Bird. The Exhausted Bird. That's what that looks like. Okay? And it's because I am so tired of telling people to fuck off and I'm so tired of flipping people off. I'm so tired of having this huge weight on my shoulders of being the guy who has to tell people to fuck off. Um, it gets tiring. It, it's a, it's a, it's a hard job, but somebody has got to do it. Um, so exhausted bird. I like, um, all my friends are dead. Um, it's fucking exactly what it is and straight to the point. So that, that title works for me. Um, the end of everything, this title works for me, but I will give you a caveat. This title, The End of Everything, Mushroom Cloud, okay? We got a mushroom cloud on here. <clears throat> when I wrote these poems, I really did feel like it was the end of everything. Like, this was dark days here for me, okay? And when I started the crowdfunding campaign for this, the day this went live was the day they put LA into lockdown, and we had no idea how bad COVID was, how bad COVID was going to be. Um, people started losing their jobs. 
and people were dying, and I started a crowdfunding campaign for a book where I was asking people for money for a book called The End of Everything. So um, I think the title's good. The timing is suspect. Um, I think we, we should have done a little bit more work on that. Um, one night, this I thought was clever. Okay, I thought this was a clever thing. In retrospect, um, you might go, oh, what's one night? Well, all the poems in this chapbook I wrote in one night. But the way I spelt it, the way I put it together, a lot of people were like, so I fucked up. So this was not a good idea. Um, but I, I like the theme. I like that. Um, Pharma Phoenix Rises. This... I thought was clever. It's a phoenix raise, rising out of a um, capsule of antidepressants. Um, Pharma Phoenix Rises is the, the the spiritual sequel to the end of everything, where um, after being put on tons of medication, I felt like I could make it through. And um, me being the phoenix rising out of the ashes, I'm actually the phoenix rising out of pharmaceuticals. So, um, this means a lot to me, but it might not mean a lot to other people. I got a lot of shit for this title. I got a lot of shit for this book, which was shocking. Um, and that all had to do with the title. Now, because I got a lot of shit for this and a lot of shit went down for it, this has been my best selling chat book. Um, so a little bit of buzz, a little bit of bullshit, a little bit of, um, people wanting to kill you, um, help sell stuff. So that's good. That worked. Um, Mart. Now the title Mart on its own doesn't really work unless you read it like in your go Matt Walmart, Matt Wal, Matt Walmart, Matt Walmart. All these poems are about Walmart. So this is clever. I think this works, but when I'm putting the title down like on my Etsy shop <clears throat> I put Mart because that's the name of it and it only works when you see the cover and you see the how you're supposed to read it so if you're just seeing that if you're just seeing the title that doesn't work but then you go oh and then like I'm like oh yeah it's poetry about consumerism in America and it is but it's not it's about me losing my mind every time I have to fucking go to Walmart so um it works on some levels, doesn't on others. Anxious Anxiety. Um, this is a short story collection, so this doesn't really count. But it is a title, and it's a title that I like. Um, but um, I have noticed that people who suffer from anxiety um, probably don't want to read a bunch of stories that are going to make their, their pulse rise and their heartbeat accelerate and um, them getting very... Uh, nervous so that that's hit or miss so let's talk about some other people's stuff um and yes we are going to talk about Bukowski because I do have a lot of his stuff um Bukowski I think is hit or miss I think his titles work and some of them don't so I'm going to show you ones that work um it's a very simple cover the days run away like wild horses over the hills. This is something you could visualize. It's something you're like, okay, wild horses running over the hills. What what runs away like that? The days? Oh, shit, the days are just going. Like, this is very um, invocative. It um, shows you something. Now, <clears throat> the thing that I don't like about how a lot of Bukowski's stuff was put together was um, I think themes are very important nowadays because um, I feel like everything in the world is categorized now. Everything is like category, category, keyword, keyword, and all this other stuff. Now, a lot of Bukowski's poetry, here, I guess I'm still doing this, a lot of Bukowski's poetry books are put together in um, like the dates he wrote them. So, these poems are poems from, I don't know what, like 1968 to 1970. I don't know if it actually says that. 
but that's what I'm assuming. So, um, no, um, probably like 68 to 69. <clears throat> so that's what you get here. Um, now, typically when you're reading a poet's work, because poetry is so internal, a lot of the times when you're reading something um, that is put together chronologically like this, a lot of the feelings um, will remain because that poet is working through those things. So in that sense, they are put together in themes, but not really. <clears throat> Whereas, um, where's the closest one? Oh my God, don't fall. Hang on, guys. We're about, to, we're about to have a problem over here. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, that was scary. So, like, um, his newer collections that are, like, kind of best of kind of things, we have on drinking. What's this going to be about? Probably a bunch of stuff about drinking. Oh, okay. Well, gosh, I really miss having my cat. I wish I could. Oh, there is. Oh, there's there's a poetry book about cats? Oh my gosh, I'm going to, oh, that's, I wish there was something I could read about, right? Oh, on right, on right. Okay, so you, you get my idea here. Just like if someone was like, oh God, I wish there was a book of poetry about Walmart because it's driving me, oh, there it is. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, so that's that. So the newer collections, um, at least of his stuff, it's very thematic, and I think that really, really helps. Um, and this one is kind of the same way, even though there is a lot of stuff in it that isn't um, along the theme, but Love is a Dog from Hell. This is his most famous uh, poetry book, um, probably the best-selling poetry book he has, and a lot of it is because that title, Love is a Dog from Hell, um, people go, oh, this is going to be about love, and it's going to be about love gone wrong. Oh, I've been there. I could, I could relate. I could do that. So that makes sense. Um, and we'll get to those. But my favorite title of his poetry stuff is "Play the Piano." Or, wait, did I say? <laughs> I'm I'm looking at the thing and the words are backwards. Okay, so play the piano drunk like a percussion instrument until the fingers begin to bleed a bit. Now he's not talking about playing the piano. He's talking about typing on the typewriter. Um, the keyboard was his piano. And when he's slamming his fingers down, it's making music. And that music he's making is telling these stories, telling these poems. And um, he, he just does it and does it and does it and does it until his fingers bleed. That's um, not probably what happened, but that's the, the idea behind it. So that is a great title, but it doesn't really um, talk about what's going on in the book. Um, but this is one of my favorite collection of his, too. This is when I feel like he was kind of at his best. What year is this? Um, 1979. I think between, um, like, 74 and 79 was probably his sweet spot, if anybody gave a shit. But Bukowski stuff, on the same hand, he has a problem with obscure titles. So, like, a good example of this is Dangling in the Tournament <laughs> yeah. Um... A lot of people, including myself, A, did not know what that was, and B, did not know how to say it. So um, I'm going to assume that this is probably one of his lower-selling poetry books because the title is so fucking obscure. Um, I don't ever hear people quoting, oh, man, you know, dangling in the tornifordia? Um, that's, oh, shit, that's the shit right there. You never hear that. Um, another thing... And this isn't poetry, but this is going about a title. Um, probably his um, worst-selling novel. And I don't know if this is accurate. I'm going to guess it is. But um, his worst-selling novel in my brain is Factotum. Now, Factotum is like someone who works a lot of ridiculous jobs. Um, a lot of odd jobs. And that was a term from way back when. Um, like probably the 30s. And when this book came out in 75-ish, um, that term 
was dead. Like, nobody knew what the fuck it was. And so I'm assuming that that really hurt the sales of this book. <clears throat> because nobody knows what the fuck it means. Nobody knows what the fuck it's talking about. Now, if he would have called this book Working Shit Jobs, this would have been his best-selling book, guaranteed. If he would have called this book The Ten-Year Drunk, um, because it basically takes place during the ten-year drunk where he wasn't... Um, writing um at all for the most of it but that would have sold this book factotum it's cool and it's like oh i see and it makes sense for the book but no one knows what the fuck that word meant um and now there's probably some highbrow fuckers watching this which i have no idea why you would want to watch this if you were a highbrow fucker but you're like of course we know what factotum is you fool you fucking neanderthal um or Neanderthal, sorry, um, you swarmy fucks. But um, as far as poetry books go, <clears throat> Holly Day's Book of Beasts, it tells you Book of Beasts. Oh, this is going to be some fucked up shit. And it is. This is a fucking... Holly Day, I think, is brutal. I just um, love her shit. It's real. It's fucking bloody. It doesn't like, oh, there's blood everywhere. But like... Her work is bloody. Like, you just feel it. And it's fucking terrifying. I love it. Um, <clears throat> another favorite title of mine is Skull Juices by Douglas Blazik. Um, because everything that is poured into this book are his fucking skull juices. Like, <laughs> into the book. And that works for me. Um, for me as a writer, for me as a reader, that's what I want. I want somebody to fucking cut themselves open and spill. You know what I'm saying? So this title works for me. And a lot of the stuff in here is um, to my love who is cleaning the basement. You know, it's like very like portrait of my neighbor as I watch him through the window. Like these are... My Living Room Whiskey Rock. This is just his titles. Um, but then we have 40 Years of Pure Hell. Oh, okay. I'm in. Um, but this is a great collection. This was probably for a long time what I considered to be like the greatest single book of poetry. Like, um, absolutely love this. It's okay now, but, like, I feel like um, I romanticized it quite a bit. And then um, one of his newer collections that I actually don't like very much, but I'm going to give it another go. A Long Rope at the Edge of the Void. That's a fucking great title. And that artwork is fucking batshit crazy, too. Um, <clears throat> so that is just talking about um, titles of collections like as a writer you have to go okay this title is going to be the thing that sells this book or not um a really good example of this too um rh sin who i truly believe to be a complete charlatan who um gets rich off of um, making vulnerable women believe that they're always going to be vulnerable. Um, I think it's disgusting. <clears throat> but his poetry is trite as fuck, by the way. But the titles, I don't have any of them here. Um, A, because I would never buy that shit. But um, I felt really good um, illegally downloading um, his work, reading it, and then realizing as I read it that there's no way I would ever pay for this shit. So I felt vindicated at that point. But the titles of his poetry collections are fucking brilliant. And um, we should probably talk about artwork, um, cover art, at another time too. But the simplistic shapes used in a lot of his poetry books drew me to him. 
because before COVID, I would go into Barnes and Noble, and they would always be on an end cap, like, "Oh, this is what poetry is." People buy this and read it, and I would always see the books, and I'm like, "Fuck, that is what a fucking book of poetry should fucking look like." That right there, that is fucking. It's crisp, it's fucking clean, and it's fucking simple. It's very minimalistic. I'm like, that's poetry. That is like the visual aspect of poetry. And then you open that book and you're lied to because all that shit is god awful. And I have no problem saying that. There was a time where I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to start fucking throwing rocks at fucking people and shit. But um, that motherfucker needs to know. Um, and the pe- the women who read his shit need to know that they're being taken advantage of and he will always make you feel that you still need to hear his words in order to make yourself feel better. It's fucking bullshit. Anyway, <clears throat> so as far as like marketing goes and your titles and shit, those books do it right because even to this day, I still read those titles. I'm like, fuck man that's a title and i see those covers and i'm like fucking hell so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go through a bunch of my shit not my personal shit but like good poetry covers and shit like that um and we'll do another video on just like artwork and what your artwork conveys but um go check out emily butler's video i know i didn't even really touch any of the stuff i thought i was going to be talking about actual poetry titles but um i got all excited about collection titles and that's what you have in fingering the mundane um stick your finger in it go to indiegogo let's get drunk it'll be fun and um yeah let me know down below what you think um today i posted a poem called all jail is on my website i hate um I posted a video, uh, video, a poem called Standards on my Patreon page the other day. And um, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it today or if I'm going to do it tomorrow, but I have some weird mask news that um, is kind of depressing. So um, we'll be touching on that too. But let me know what you think down below. If you have like, if you're like, oh, no, you fucked up because you didn't talk about this poetry collection. If there's a poetry collection that you're like, this is what this is what you call a poetry collection, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. I want to know down below. Tell me what they are. And I will see you later.